Hey guys, it's Jenny. Welcome back once again to another Solid Gold video. We are here at Forest Lake Pets in none other than Forest Lake, Minnesota. And we are joined today by Ted Judy from Ted's Fish Room. Thank Hello. you for being here. You're welcome. And you're actually in Minnesota today because you're speaking at the Minnesota Aquarium Society meeting, right? Uh, yeah, I gave a talk at the Minnesota Aquarium Society last night. We're giving another talk at one of the members' homes this evening. Awesome. Uh, it's always a pleasure to come to Minnesota. Uh, it's been a couple of years since I've been up giving talks, but I get up here, you know, a couple times a year. So for those viewers who might not know what Ted's Fish Room is all about, can you kind of describe it in a nutshell for them? Okay, uh, Ted's Fish Room is my personal blog and website that's kind of become a video blog. If you go to tedsfishroom.com, you can go through and see videos of my fish, how I do things, like how I pack fish for shipping. You can see videos of my fish room itself, how I've got that organized. It's meant to be an educational website. It is also a retail website, so I'm not gonna hide that. I do sell things off the website as well. Uh, but it started, tedsfishroom.com started in 2006, I believe. So it's, been, it's a little, almost 10 years old now. It's a long time. Um, where it's been through a couple different iterations, but the video blog really got started about three years ago. And I think there's okay. probably, well, oh, there's gotta be 60 or 70 videos on it now. Um, I need to re-update the, uh, the index. I have, about once a year I go through an index everything. So it's got a, almost a couple of years of videos that aren't even on the index anymore. So you kind of have to explore through it. So I know that personally your videos about setting up fish room have been um, really helpful to me and I know to a lot of people as well. Can you kind of give beginners the, the most important tip when they're starting out a new fish room? Uh, probably the most important thing when you're designing a fish room is discerning the amount of time that you have to dedicate to a fish room. Mm -hmm. The idea of having a 100 tank fish room sounds great until you only have 30 minutes a day to spend in there. So if you have two aquariums in your house and it takes you two hours on Saturday to clean those two aquariums, imagine that compounded by 40 or 50. Yeah. So there are ways to set up fish rooms where things are automated so they're not as much work. And you kind of have to do that. But don't get into building a fish room unless you think you're going to have the time to maintain it. Good advice. Money is secondary. Money doesn't count. <laughs> time is more important. Yeah, can't get that back. So you have kept a lot of fish over the years. What would you say is your most, your single most favorite species and why? Oh, Pelvicromus pulker, the common crib. Okay. Uh, it's, it's my first cichlid I ever kept. It's the first fish that spawned for me in captivity I ever kept. Uh, I've never gotten tired of them, of their behavior. I, you know, I keep all the different species of pelvic chromis. I've been to West Africa collecting and awesome. looking at pelvic chromis in the wild. Um, it's my favorite genus, and pulchre is probably my favorite species. Really cool. It's always cool to see what makes people tick, like what their favorite is. And it's and it's a relatively inexpensive fish. They so well, oh, what? Helps. It's not the rarest, weirdest fish out there. No, it's the one that anybody can get, keep in your aquarium, small tank, big tank, you'll enjoy them. Get a crib. <laughs> or a goldfish. Or a goldfish. <laughs> or both. I, mean, I like, go I like goldfish too. I actually, I've actually had, when I was in college, I'm really dating myself now, back in the 80s, <laughs> um, I had a, a 75 gallon aquarium that I started with African cichlids. And I would go to work or school, and I would come back and I'd watch these fish slaughter each other, just yeah. knock each other out. And I would get so angry and pent up watching these expensive fish kill each other. So I worked in the pet shop at the time, so I took all those fish back. And we happened to have just gotten in about 25 or 30 nice medium sized arandas. Cool. And so now I'm getting home at 1 o'clock in the morning after work, sitting down, cracking a beer, and watching these big bubbly goldfish go along. And it was so relaxing. Yeah. So I, I've done my share of goldfish. I like them too. Cool. But my fish room's too hot. Okay. It's hard for me to keep them in my room. Yeah, that's the struggle. At a warmer temperature, I talked about this in my previous video, but at a warmer temperature, goldfish metabolism is faster, so mm -hmm. they have a shorter lifespan. Right. Well, so it's, little, it's a long one, line one fish, challenge. too. My, one of my biggest challenges with goldfish in warm water is I don't think they get as good a fin growth. I think their fin growth tends to be raggedy. I think it tends to okay. get a lot of, a lot of they have more septicemia issues. Yeah. There's more disease issues. And really, any kind of fish that likes cool water, it's really oxygen content. Yep. So as you, as you increase the temperature of water, your oxygen content capability goes down. Yep. So, and goldfish need high oxygen. I've kept them in ponds. Um, I like them in ponds. I've kept them in outdoor bats. Usually every summer I have a bunch of uh, 
you know, outdoor, you know, little pond bats. Yep. And I'll put some, you know, baby pearl scales, little guys in there, but usually I'm getting rid of them at the end of the summer because I don't have any place cool to keep them over the winter. The next question was going to be, what are your thoughts about goldfish? But I think we've covered that. <laughs> I, I, think gold, I think goldfish are great. Yeah. You, with freshwater fish, with all fish, with freshwater fish, the variety and types of fish that you can keep are so diverse. People say, why don't you keep reef tanks? Why don't you keep marine tanks? Well, I've done that. Uh, but I haven't run out of freshwater fish. Yeah, uh, there's so many. I have done goldfish, I've bred goldfish, I've kept them in ponds, kept them in aquariums. I'm not going to say I'm past goldfish because I would like to keep goldfish, but I'm in an area right now in my hobby where goldfish are not my focus. Uh, if I had a big, beautiful display tank in my living room, I have no problem putting goldfish in. I think they're wonderful. They're pretty fun to watch with all the colors, all the flowing fins, yeah. different body shapes. Yeah. On your website, you sell aquarium fish and plants, as we kind of alluded to. Anything ranging from betas to catfish to cichlids. How did you first get involved or interested in selling fish? Well, when I was in college, I started working retail. I worked at a, um, a store in, in, in um, Bloomington, Indiana. I went to Indiana University. I worked in an aquarium store for about three years. Okay. And then I've always kind of dabbled in it since then. Um, you know, the option is open a store, you know, kind of like where we're at now, of course, like pets, yep. or just kind of do it on a small scale. And with the advent of the internet, it really allows me to, to be a decent sized retailer and be you know, able to offer lots of different fish um, in a relatively small space and with a, with a large market. Okay. Um, so uh, why do I sell fish? Well, because I moved my fish room out of my house mm -hmm. two years ago, and now I have rent. So the reason I sell fish is to pay the bills so that I can maintain my fish room. Okay. My fish room is still, a good portion of it is a hobby room. I still breed fish, keep fish, I enjoy keeping them. But I find it really necessary to sell fish in order to be able to support it. It's an expensive hobby for sure. Yeah. It can be. And it, yeah, yeah, that's a part of it too. Don't, go, don't get into it if you don't want to spend the money. But one of the things I do, and I still do this today, even with my business side of it, I don't take loans. Yeah. So if I can't afford to buy it, if I want to do an import of fish from South America, and I don't have the money to get those fish, don't I don't do get it. the fish. Yeah. You know, it's that simple. Yeah. Except travel. You should go to China. <laughs> you burn yeah. up the credit cards. Travel. See some awesome goldfish That's over right. there. Once in a lifetime opportunity for That's right. sure. What types of fish are you currently breeding? Uh, mostly a pistogramma. Um, I've recently been importing a lot of fish from Peru, and I, I like dwarf cichlids, so I have the tank space and I have the fish, so I start spawning those. Awesome. I still keep a lot of uh, West African cichlids, a lot of pelvic chromis. I still have some fish that are downline from fish I brought back from my trips to Africa, you know, four or five years ago, so that's yeah. kind of fun. And I work with a lot of Corydoras catfish. Okay. Um, and then a few oddball things. I'm working with a few little wood cats, Tadia species, Centromocha species, things like that. Uh, but almost everything I do is small tank. Okay. I, I think the biggest tank I breed in is maybe a 20 gallon aquarium. Okay. Helps for space, probably. Well, that's what I have available. Yeah. You know, my, my bigger tanks are holding 100 epistos okay. you know, from, from imports. Yeah. So my small tanks where I can put a pair of fish. What do you think is the most rewarding thing about raising fry? And then also, what is the most challenging thing? Well, the rewarding aspect is just being successful doing it. I yeah. mean, being able to go from a from a pair of fish to eggs to fry to spawn and be able to get them to be young adult fish and, and I mean you can say oh selling them I don't, selling them really isn't that big of an issue eventually you have to distribute them you can't keep them all right um, I think the hardest thing about about raising fry is raising them so they have good condition I mean we a lot of people look at baby fish or young fish and they see deformities or they see bad fins or bad faces and they go oh that's bad genetics it's not I mean, 99.9% .9 of the time when you have a problem associated with the way a fish looks, it's water cleanliness, it's oxygen, it's making sure you don't have ammonia, it's the right food, it's water changes. Raising fish is not the easiest part of breeding fish. Getting the eggs is the easy part. Yeah. Raising them into adult fish is the hardest part, and that takes a lot of attention and a lot of good water quality. 
And we call that, with goldfish, we call that grooming them. Mm -hmm. So grooming, grooming them. them, and that includes like water quality, feeding the right foods, the right amounts, the right feeding schedule, all that kind of stuff. Water movement as well can be an issue with goldfish because their fins can get bent and kinked. There's a lot of water movement when they're mm -hmm. young. So yeah. And that, and that comes back to, water, to oxygen content too. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think one of the other things with fry, because fry are small, I think we tend to overcrowd them. I think we say, oh, hey, we can put 200 fish in this two and a half gallon tank because they're only a quarter inch long. Yeah. No, no, you can't. Not really. Actually, more space is usually better. Yeah, they need that space to be able to grow properly. You know, one of the talks that I give at clubs um, is raising fry. It's an hour long discussion just on how to raise fry. Maybe someday I'll get around to video content on how to raise fry, but I have a lot of priorities. Now I know you have about an 1,800 foot square room fish, square foot fish room that is packed with tanks. How do you find the time to maintain that? And when you're away, do you have someone that helps you? Well, no, I don't. I, I'm actually hiring. Are you interested? I need <laughs> someone to come work. Uh, no, my fishing is very automated. I have an automated water change system, um, which is really designed for warehousing fish. My breeder tanks are still water changed, kind of automated. I, I turn a valve, water drains, I fill it back up. Wow. All my warehousing tanks, they're on an automated drip system where they get a 30% water change every other day. But it's but the point is, it's all computer automated. Wow. Not expensive. You go to Home Depot, you get the lawn sprinkler system, and you can turn that into an automated water chain system. So awesome. it's not like it's a lot of money into it. Yeah. Um, the hardest part about being out of town um, and not being around your fish room is when there's problems. You know, I come back from being out of town for four or five days, and you get really upset and mad at yourself when you find a tank that's crashed. Maybe it wouldn't have crashed had I been there. Right. Uh, so yeah, that's one reason I kind of need somebody around is so that I can, um, I can travel more and do a little more. I do have a friend that comes into my fish room when I'm not there and checks on things for me, but okay. he's not an employee, so it's really not a, a responsibility. Yeah, it's hard when you're out of town. There might have been something that you would have noticed when before it got to be catastrophe, but then you're not there to notice it. So when you come back, it's already a catastrophe, and then it, it only how do takes you deal with it that? takes two hours to go from a problem to a catastrophe. Yeah, you know, especially with you know you have. You have one or two fish die in a small tank, and then it fouls the tank. Then everything is everything yeah. gone. So you got to be careful. And fish die. But I'd love to say that fish never die in my fish room. But when you're importing and you're wholesaling and you're retailing, and at any given time you've got five thousand or six thousand fish in your fish room, um, which are stressed, then you're going to lose some. But I lose very few. I mean, I go through my fish room, and it's pretty rare to pull more than one or two dead fish in a day. Good. And it happens. Yeah. It does happen. It's just a numbers game when you have that many fish, obviously. Yeah. There yeah, are going to have some dying. mortalities. Lastly, so I know uh, it takes a lot of dedication to run the type of fish operation that you do. What would you say keeps you motivated and keeps you coming back day after day to keep doing this? Um, people. Actually, I would say that the best aspect of what I call the organized aquarium hobby is the people. You get to meet people like you. Uh, people that are dedicated to educating other people about aquarium hobbies. Um, I, I, I always answer an email, I always answer text, whatever I need to be. Uh, going to events, going to aquarium clubs, um, which is a part of the business, it's the way I promote myself and promote my product. Yeah. But probably the number one thing that keeps me motivated coming back in day after day after day is the fish. Because you get to spend time with the fish tank, it's very relaxing. Um, it's it's interesting. I'm addicted to it. I've been doing it for you know 30 years or more. I know what that feels like. <laughs> and the uh, but uh, when things go right, it's just exciting. It's just fun. And when you're doing what I do, which is importing fish and bringing rare fish and interesting fish in, every order is like Christmas. You know, you work hard to get 20 boxes to come in from Peru, and you spend 10 hours putting them away. But every time you open a box, even though you know what it says on the outside of the box, it's like Christmas. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. I watched one of your recent um, order opening of all those 30 boxes, I think it was. Right. And there were some where there was fish in there that you hadn't ordered. That's right. So I can see how that would be really exciting. It's like, what is what's this? this? I mean, I, I, you know, I know a lot about goldfish, but not necessarily so much about other types of fish. I'd be on Google trying to figure out what is this right. fish that they sent me that I did not order. Well, and you know, that video had my son Matthew in it. And he's yeah. 13, and Matthew, Matthew likes aquariums, but he's kind of at that age where it's not a priority in his life. But when he has the opportunity to come help me unpack a fish order, 
he gets into the excitement too. Yeah. It says, oh, cool, let's go unpack fish. Yeah, Santa, the fish Santa has arrived. That's right. <laughs> Right. Well, thank you so much, Ted, for being in our video this week. Oh, you're um, very welcome. I'm really excited to be able to ask you my burning questions and then share a little bit about your channel and your blog with my viewers as well. So yeah, I, I do have a YouTube channel um, only because I use it to host my videos. I have a lot of followers on YouTube. I really try to get them to go to my website because the website has got an in, a written introduction and a description of what you're going to see in the video that yeah. you don't get on YouTube. So the full experience is to go experience it on tedfishing.com. So all the links will be in the description section below. Thank you guys so much for tuning in this week. And until next time, stay gold. And smile. Okay. Yeah, that would help. Not like awkwardly. It's awkward. <laughs> Sorry, smile. That's Never mind. Never mind. I laugh at him all the time. <laughs> This video was made possible through the generous support of viewers like you. To find out more, go to patreon.com slash solidgoldfish.